Why don't ships ever get bored? Because they're always out to sea. Now that's a bit of maritime humor to get us started. You see, the art of shipbuilding is as old as civilization itself. From the ancient Egyptian papyrus boats to the colossal cruise ships of the 21st century, ships have played a crucial role in human history. Imagine for a moment the endless blue horizons, the salty sea air, and the thrill of discovery. Ships have been instrumental in global trade, exploration, and even warfare. They've allowed us to reach the farthest corners of the earth, bridging continents and cultures. And what about the shipbuilders, the shipwrights? Their craft is a fascinating blend of science, art, and sheer grit. They create these formidable structures that can withstand the wildest of seas and the harshest of storms. So, if you've ever wondered how these massive sea vessels are made, buckle up. We're about to embark on an exciting journey of shipbuilding. Like a chef needs a recipe, a shipwright needs a blueprint. Now this isn't just any run-of-the-mill blueprint. We're talking about a detailed plan, outlining every nook and cranny of what will become a majestic ship. Just like there are different types of food, there are different types of ships. Each type requires a unique design. You wouldn't use the blueprint for a fishing boat to build a cruise ship, would you? That'd be like using a recipe for pizza to bake a cake. And who are the masterminds behind these intricate designs? Naval architects. These are the folks who combine their knowledge of engineering and design to create blueprints that guide shipwrights in creating everything from tiny sailboats to massive aircraft carriers. Remember, a ship without a proper blueprint is like a fish without water, it just won't work. Once we have our blueprint, it's time to give our ship some bones. Now, you might be thinking, bones? Ships have bones? Well, not in the way humans do, but yes, ships have what we call a skeleton or frame. This frame is like the backbone of the ship, providing the structural integrity needed to withstand the forces of the sea. Let's talk about the materials used to construct this frame. Typically, we use either steel or aluminum. Steel, a strong, sturdy, and dense material is often preferred for its robustness. It's like the strong man at the circus, able to bear heavy loads without batting an eyelid. On the other hand, aluminum, the lighter and more flexible cousin of steel, is also a popular choice. If steel is the strong man, then aluminum is the nimble acrobat, able to bend and flex without breaking. This flexibility can come in handy when navigating choppy waters. Now, constructing the ship's hull is a bit like putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle. We start with the keel, the central beam that runs from the bow to the stern. This is the spine of our ship, and just like our own spines, it needs to be strong and flexible. Next, we add in the ribs. These are the cross beams that extend out from the keel. These ribs give the ship its shape and provide additional strength. The process is somewhat similar to building a house, but instead of bricks and mortar we're using steel or aluminum plates. Once the basic frame is assembled it's time for reinforcement. Additional beams and bulkheads are added to ensure that the ship can withstand the forces it will face at sea. These reinforcements are like the ship's muscles adding extra strength and stability. And there you have it. Our ship now has a backbone. Quite a feat of engineering isn't it? But don't get too excited, it's not ready to swim just yet. We still have a lot of work to do, so let's roll up our sleeves and get back to it. So, our ship now has a backbone, but it's not ready to swim just yet. Now let's dress up our skeleton and give it some organs. Begins our journey into making the ship whole. This stage is like dressing up a mannequin, but instead of clothes we're talking about sheets of metal, and instead of a fashion show, we're preparing for a voyage across the seven seas. The outer layer or the ship's skin is a crucial component. It's not just there to make the ship look pretty, or to give it a sleek, aerodynamic shape. No my friends, it serves a far more vital purpose. The outer layer is the ship's first line of defense against the harsh elements of the sea. It's like the ship's personal superhero suit, protecting it from water, wind, and even rogue sea monsters. Well, maybe not the last one, but you get the idea. But that's not all. The ship's skin also plays a pivotal role in buoyancy. You might be thinking, wait a minute, metal sinks, right? Well, you're not wrong. But when this metal is shaped into a hollow form like our ship, it displaces enough water to stay afloat. It's a classic case of Archimedes' principle at work. Science for the win. Now that our ship has its superhero suit on, it's time to install some vital organs. We're talking about the engine, the navigation system, the living quarters, and more. Each of these systems plays a crucial role in the ship's functionality. The engine, for instance, is like the ship's heart, pumping power throughout the vessel. The navigation system is the brain, guiding the ship safely through the waters. And the living quarters? Well, that's the ship's stomach, providing a place for the crew to refuel and recharge. 
As we wrap up this stage, our ship has transformed. It's no longer a skeletal structure but a fully equipped sea vessel, ready to brave the high seas and explore uncharted territories. Voila! Our ship is now more than just a floating hunk of metal, it's a fully equipped sea vessel. There you have it folks, from a shipwright's folly to a maritime marvel, our ship is now ready to set sail. Now comes the fun part, the ship's maiden voyage. After the toil and sweat, the shipwrights give the vessel her final touches. A vibrant coat of paint here, an elegant nameplate there. She's not just a ship, she's a masterpiece, a floating canvas of human ingenuity. As the last drop of paint dries, the moment of truth arrives. The launching process begins. It's a sight to behold, a colossal structure sliding into the water for the very first time. It's like watching a baby bird take its first flight, only this bird is made of steel and weighs thousands of tons. Then comes the ship's first voyage, a crucial test for her seaworthiness. The shipwrights hold their breath as they watch their creation take on the open sea. It's a nerve-wracking yet exhilarating moment, a testament to the shipwright's skills and dedication. And there you have it, from a blueprint to a fully functional ship. It's quite a journey, isn't it? But remember, it's not the destination, it's the voyage that counts.